Hello dear students, how are you all? I hope all of you are doing well at homes. Please stay at homes and stay safe. Maintain social distancing and keep yourself clean and do all those activities that increase your immunity levels and don't forget to wash your hands regularly. So this is Dr. Ashok Kumar and as a part of our online classes in order to complete our syllabus in engineering chemistry. So we have already started third unit corrosion module one. So in module one, uh, we have already discussed about the introduction part of corrosion. So what is corrosion, the types of corrosion, the definition of corrosion, various theories of corrosion and um, uh, and also uh, what are the factors that affect the rate of corrosion etc. Right? So today we are going to discuss uh, about the module 2 of corrosion unit that is nothing but corrosion control methods. Okay, so in uh, module 1 under galvanic type of corrosion, we have discussed some methods to avoid galvanic type of corrosion. Right, in that galvanic type of corrosion, uh, we discussed that uh, in order to avoid galvanic type of corrosion, we need to select two metals which are very close to each other in a galvanic series. And also, uh, we need to use an insulating material between two metals to avoid the galvanic type of corrosion. Right. But here, uh, most of the time in our daily life, most of us may not aware that what are the two metals actually which are very close to each other in a galvanic series that may, uh, we may not aware, right? And also, most of the time, the construction designs may not be feasible for us to use insulating material, okay, in order to avoid the corrosion. So that's why there are so many, you know, limitations for us to uh, follow certain type of conditions especially in order to avoid the galvanic type of corrosions that may happen generally in our daily life. So that's how here uh, there are certain corrosion control methods have been proposed. Okay, so among these corrosion control methods in our syllabus we have sacrificial anodic protection and impressive cathodic protections are there. So whatever the corrosion control methods have been proposed uh, that are present in the subject most of the time these corrosion control methods also mostly depending upon the nature of the metal and also depending upon the factors that actually uh, influences the corrosion so by modifying uh, these factors we can able to co control the corrosion so whatever the corrosion control methods have been proposed the, uh, those methods also depending upon the nature of the metals and nature of the factors that uh, affect the rate of corrosion so that's why uh, if whatever the method that we follow if they are able to modify those factors then these uh, control methods have been you know very much useful to, in order to protect the metals okay so there are uh, four important corrosion control methods are there in our syllabus that is first one is called sacrificial anodic protection second one is called impressed current cathodic protection third one is called uh, control of corrosion by modifying the metal Fourth one is called corrosion inhibitors using corrosion inhibitors or control of corrosion by modifying the metal by using corrosion inhibitors. So these are the uh, important uh, corrosion control methods that we have in our syllabus. Among these, uh, sacrificial anodic protection method and uh, impressed current cathodic protection methods are very much important. Okay, that we have to uh, you know uh, discuss in our syllabus today. So the first one is called sacrificial anodic protection. So the name itself uh, indicates the sacrificing of an anodic material in order to protect the you know main metal. Okay. So in this method, the metallic structure to be protected is made of cathode by connecting with one more active metal which is anode. Okay. So here, uh, the uh, it is very much simple. The sacrificial anodic protection method is very much simple. So whatever the uh, you know target metal that we want to protect, okay, we have to make make sure that that metal should be act as cathode. Means it should be less active. Okay, how can we make a, any metal less active? Means by connecting it with another metal which is more active. Okay, so when we connect uh, our target metal with more active metal, automatically it will become less active. So that will always act as cathode. Okay, so in this method. Uh, the metallic structure to be protected is made cathode by connecting it with more active metal which is anode so that all the corrosion will concentrate only on the active metal which is nothing but an anode the artificially made anode thus gradually corroded by protecting the original metallic structure hence 
this process is otherwise known as sacrificial anodic protection method okay uh, for example aluminium zinc magnesium etc are used as sacrificial anodes generally this method is used uh, is used for the protection of ships and boats etc so sheets of magnesium or zinc are hung around the hull of the ships and boats in order to you know protect the metal so in this method zinc or magnesium will act as anode compared to iron iron uh, the metal most of the ships or boat is made up of generally right so in order to protect protect the iron of the of the boards most of the time the zinc or magnesium sheets will be hung around these you know uh, boards or uh, uh, boards or ships okay so corrosion concentrate on zinc or magnesium only so since they are sacrificed in the process of saving iron they are called sacrificial anode so that's why this method is called sacrificial anode protection method or sacrificial anodic protection method okay so the method is very much simple so whatever the metal we want to protect okay that should be attached with more active metal which is uh, an anodic material for example in order to protect the iron which is the basic material of iron uh, uh, ships and boats okay so this iron board should be you know hung hung with uh, other type of uh, you know magnesium or aluminum or zinc sheets so that's why whenever corrosion happens okay these aluminum or magnesium sheets will be corroded first okay by protecting the iron so that's why by sacrificing themselves these anodic materials are protecting the cathodic metal that is our main metal so that's why this method is called as sacrificial anodic protection method so the important applications of sacrificial anodic protection are first one protection of underground pipelines cables okay from soil corrosion so most of the underground pipelines cables and other materials uh, from soil corrosion will be uh, these will be protected from soil corrosion you know by using the sacrificial anodic protection method only and the second one insertion of magnesium sheets into the domestic water boilers to prevent the formation of rust so the domestic boilers also will be protected uh, by using you know a coat of magnesium sheets okay the magnesium sheet sheets will be inserted on the surface um, surfaces of the boilers of you know boilers material okay third one calcium metal is employed to minimize engine corrosion so most of the engines uh, are avoided by using calcium metal as a coating on their surface so that's uh, that's how uh, by sacrificing themselves these metals generally protect the cathode metals okay so the second method is called impressed current cathodic protection method okay so here in this method an impressed current is applied in the opposite direction of the corrosion current to nullify it and the corroding metal is converted from anode to cathode so we know that in a, in the general process of corrosion when uh, there is a galvanic type of cell is formed generally we know that always current flows from anode to cathode that's how the corrosion product forms so if we are able to stop the uh, natural current that uh, generates which flows from anode to cathode then we are able to you know stop the formation of corrosion product how can we stop this general flow of current from anode to cathode means by supplying external current which is also called as impressive current okay so when we supply an external current okay uh, to the anode where uh, the natural current which generates okay the external impressed current will be nullifies the galvanic current that flows from anode to cathode so that's why we can able to prevent the formation of corrosion product okay so that's why it is called as impressed current cathodic protection method so here in this method also uh, the objective metal that we have to protect is always uh, behave like a cathode so in order to protect this cathodic metal okay so whatever the anode is there which generally uh, generate electrons or generate the current that should be nullified by supplying external current to the anode so the external current nullifies the current that actually generate a flow from anode to cathode so that's how okay by impressing external current okay uh, towards the anode we are protecting the cathodes here 
so that's why this method is called impressive current cathodic protection method okay so this this can be done by connecting negative terminal of the battery to the metallic structure to be protected and positive terminal of the battery is connected to an inert anode inert anodes used for this purpose are graphite platinized titanium etc so the anode is buried in a backfill backfill is nothing but it containing the mixture of gypsum coke sodium sulfate etc so the backfill provides good electric electrical contact to anode so what happens here whatever uh, the metal that we want to protect okay so that metal will be connected to the uh, negative terminal of the battery okay in the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the inner anode okay so that's how the current will be flows here how this current will be uh, flows from you know external uh, battery terminal to the in, uh, to the metallic surface means by using uh, a backfill material this backfill material is uh, containing the mixture of gypsum, coke, breeze, sodium sulfate, etc. Because this backfill provides, you know, good electrical contact to anode. Okay. So important applications of impressor current cathodic protection are structures like tanks, pipelines, transmission line towers, marine pyres, and uh, um, ladder structures, etc. Uh, th all these uh, will be generally protected by generally using this impressor. Uh, current cathodic protection method okay so this is about two important corrosion control methods one is sacrificial anode method second one is impressed current uh, cathodic protection method okay so what are the differences are there between both sacrificial anodic method and impressed current cathode method okay if we observe the comparison between two these two methods in sacrificial anode method no external power supply is necessary Okay, but in impressed uh, current cathodic method, external power supply should be present and it is must. And in sacrificial anode method, this method requires periodical replacement of sacrificial anode. Okay, so in sacrificial anode method, so periodically we have to change these anodes, anodes of you know zinc, magnesium or aluminum sheets. Whenever they are completely corroded, then they, those sheets will be replaced by the new sheets. Okay, but in impressed current method, anodes are stable and do not disintegrate. So we may not need to uh, replace every time in this method. Okay, the investment is very low in sacrificial anode method, but in impressed current cathode method, the investment is more. In sacrificial anode method, soil and microbiological corrosion effects are not taken into account. Okay, because uh, Corrosion, we are uh, you know, increasing corrosion in sacrificial anode method, but this corrosion will be di uh, diverted towards the uh, more anode uh, material like aluminum and zinc. So that's why in sacrificial anode method, we may not uh, count the microbial corrosion effects or you no know, biological corrosion effects. But in pressure current cathode uh, protection method, soil and microbiological corrosions and corrosion effects are taken into account. And in sacrificial anode method, this is the most economical method, especially when short term protection is required. Okay, so that's why uh, sacrificial anode method is uh, very much useful for short term protections. Okay, but impressed current method is well suited for large structures and long term operations. Okay, but for long time operations, this impressed current cathodic protection method is very much useful for us. Okay, the sacrificial anode method is very suitable when the current requirement and the resistivity of the electrolytes are relatively low. Okay, so in mild conditions, in low conditions, okay, and low resistivity conditions, this sacrificial anode method may be useful. Okay. But impressive current cathode protection method can be practiced even if the current requirement and the resistivity of the electrolyte are high. Okay, so when the external electrolyte resistivity and external factors are very much high, okay, we can able to choose this impressive cathode current current protection method. So, uh, next corrosion control methods are control of corrosion by modifying the metal. Okay, so most of the time, generally the corrosion happens to the metal, right? So when we able to modify the metal, 
because what are the characters that uh, that has been altered by this corrosion if you modify those metals those characters also have been modified so whatever the things or whatever the practices that we do if we if those practices are able to modify the metal then the corrosion should be controlled okay so this control of corrosion by modifying metal mostly done by using external coatings like paints surface coating etc these are also called protective coatings so protective coatings are used to protect the metals from corrosion and these protective coatings act as physical barrier between the coated metal surface and the environment however they are also used for the decorative purpose in addition to corrosion protection and decoration they import some special properties such as hardness electrical properties oxidation resistance and thermal insulating properties to the protected surface so coating coatings like paints varnishes lacquers and enamels are called organic coatings they are applied on the metallic surfaces for both corrosion resistant and decoration okay so this corrosion control by also we do generally by you know uh, by using surface coatings so these surface coatings most of the time uh, you know they are useful acting protecting purposes also so that's why these are also called as protective coatings so these protective coatings are used to protect the metals from corrosion so whenever we apply any any surface coating on the surface of the metal okay these protective coatings not only stop the corrosion they also act like barriers physical barriers okay between the coated metal surface and the environment okay and most of the times this protective coating also use it for the decoration purpose a decorative purpose okay so in addition to corrosion protection and decoration so these most of the time this protective coating also import some extra character characteristics to the metal like you know they um, they also increasing the you know hardness properties increasing the electrical properties oxidation resistance properties and thermal insulating properties okay to the protected surface okay so most of the times coatings like paints varnishes okay lacquers and enamels are called as organic coatings because these coatings are generally made up of organic material so they are applied on the metallic surfaces for both corrosion resistant and are also for decoration so, okay so these protective co coatings are generally of two types inorganic coatings and organic coatings okay protective coatings are of two types inorganic coatings and organic coatings okay these inorganic coatings are again two types metallic coatings and non metallic coatings okay metallic and non metallic coatings organic coatings are generally the paints varnishes lacquers enamels etc okay uh, these metallic coatings generally done by you know uh, applying uh, Uh, one metallic material on the surface of the an another metallic material so that's why it is called metallic coatings so mostly these metallic coatings generally done by uh, hard dipping methods hard dipping methods metal cladding methods cementation methods and electroplating methods okay and non metallic coating methods are by using surface or chemical conversion coating methods okay or anodizing methods or vitreous or porcelain enamel coating methods so this this comes under non metallic coatings okay so but in our syllabus we have only about metallic coatings only so among these metallic coatings the important methods that we need to discuss are hard dipping methods and electroplating methods in addition to cementation methods okay so these three methods we will uh, discuss in module 3 okay so in module 2 we only discussed about the corrosion control methods among these corrosion control methods we discussed about sacrificial anodic protection methods and also impressive current cathodic protection method okay so what is sacrificial anodic protection method and what is impressed uh, current cathodic protection methods and the comparison between these two methods okay and the examples are applications of these two methods okay so these two methods are very much important and also as this uh, module 2 is somewhat smaller than compared to the module 1 okay both sacrificial and sacrificial anodic protection method and uh, impressed current cathode protection methods are very very much important okay in module 3 we will cover all this you know surface coating protective coatings uh, where we need to discuss about metallic coatings which are which comes under hard dipping and uh, cementation and electroplating methods okay all these methods that we will discuss in module 3 okay 